Hi, so glad to have you back with us again today. Dr. Kathy Guerrero here with Life Builder TV. Uh, I'm, I'm always so, so excited to be able to have you with us because I believe that God really wants to increase us and to uh, sharpen us up, but a lot of times he wants to challenge us in certain areas, maybe that we're not even thinking about. And so uh, today in our program, we're going to be talking about our moral compass. And so uh, we were here at our last program and I had my, my good friend Ray Marie Kimura with us. And so I've invited her back again today. And Ray Marie is just an incredible person. Uh, I've known her for over a decade now and I've watched her life and she's just steady as a rock. Not saying she didn't have some some days that yeah. were very challenged like the rest of us, but I just so value and appreciate her. So I'm going to introduce you to my friend, Ray Marie. Uh, so Ray Marie, this is Ray Marie Kimura. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, well, thank you so much, Pastor mm -hmm. Kathy, for having me here on Life Builder TV. Uh, my name is Ray Marie Kimura, and I'm so blessed to be here. I am a wife of a wonderful husband mm. for next in about a week or so. It's going to be 12 years. Oh. I have three beautiful daughters, ages seven is mm -hmm. Isabel, uh, four and a half is Alina, and one and a half is Leilani. And all three of them are miracles mm -hmm. in themselves and answered to prayer. Um, I recently left a, a long corporate career in the financial industry to be more available in my home and spearhead my children and and be able to just be involved in their lives and do more ministry so awesome. let's see what god has for us amen yeah. awesome awesome uh ray marie's husband is also an educator and so yes. uh they have some children that are absolutely adorable we just love them thank you just greatest little children so i, I kind of want to pick up our our conversation that we had last time over uh what our moral compass is and right. how do we utilize that and what's the importance of it so i'm going to invite you and really encourage you to go back and look at the previous week so that you can then of course add that to build on to what we're talking about today but just as a, a little brief uh overview ray marie would you define what a moral compass is for us so that we can make sure that everybody knows where we're going sure yes so when you think about a moral compass it has two components mm -hmm. you've got the compass and then you have the moral that you put in front of it now when you think about your compass it's really just an instrument that has a magnetic sig signal that's going to point you north okay it's a true indicator of physical direction now when you put morals in front of it mm -hmm. morals in a simple definition is kind of really understanding the right and wrong of human behavior and so when you Think about somebody using their moral compass it's kind of like the process that they go through when making a decision or going a certain direction in their life good, good. so really what are they going to base their decisions off of good so so then why do we need a moral compass to maintain god's standards well a lot of it is just based off of understanding our identity so we need to think about the one who created us we've got our creator so we need to know his values his standards Good. his morals mm -hmm. that therefore lays the foundation for us to stay in that kind of steady steady journey of, of focusing in your true north right that's Good. the only way you can really uphold the standard if you have to base it off of something right. god's word right absolutely and you know when we're, we're talking about true north uh you know that the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven is true north. And so if we're, we're thinking about, you know, a, just a natural compass takes us north, but a, a moral compass will keep us steady in the, in the kingdom principles that are already written down for us in the word. And, you know, if you think about it, you know, just life itself storms of life will come up and they'll they'll buffet you and they'll try and take you off course uh you know sometimes you feel like you're absolutely shipwrecked yeah that <laughs> and, happens. So, <laughs> and so what we have to do is we have to look back at how god utilizes all those situations and we can see that he wants us to make right decisions so that he can come back and he can bring the correction to us and we can get back on course right. so um it, for me, I, I think we have to stop and we have to look at the importance of those uh, moral uh, compass and the standards 
as far as uh, what qualities are there in there that uh, we have to really pay attention to? I mean, there are more than we could even talk about today. Right. But I, I was thinking about, you know, your moral compass and being on the, uh, the, the sea of challenges and all that sort right. of thing. And I was thinking, well, hey, there's seven seas. Because right. we're always sailing the seven seas. But we, we can't get into seven because, of course, that's, that's, we get too complex for that. But, but a few of them that I, I picked out, and I'll just read them for you, would be character. Mm -hmm. conduct, culture, courage, and, and of course, core values. So right. let's just discuss that just a little bit. And then, then I want to talk to you, if we have enough time left, I want to talk about uh, your, your moral compass and perspective, because perspective is a, is a big thing. Okay, so with, when we're talking about uh, your moral compass and, and how it can help us to to understand what what a godly character is all about, you, right. can you can you add just a little something Absolutely. to that? Absolutely, uh, I have these conversations with my children all the time. Even though they're young, you have to start when they're young. You can't magically make up something when they're a teenager and expect that to go well. <laughs> that's so, let so me, true. That's that's what I've learned in, in this. Um, but character is really who we are in the inside. Mm -hmm. It is the person that we are when no one is watching. That's right. Or when no one is listening. That's good. And before we chose to follow Jesus, is that the Bible tells us that our character was of sinful nature. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. you have that transformation with Jesus, our character changes alongside of that. Mm -hmm. And so our Absolutely. actions, our thoughts, our perspectives have to change when you have that type of transformation. That's right. And when you think about somebody mm -hmm. who's watching you, it's almost kind of confusing mm -hmm. to them if your character doesn't change. Right. You claim one thing, but your actions do something else. Very good. Very good. Very true. Uh, and so so our, our character needs to match the nature and the character of Christ. And the only way that's going to happen is when we're transformed through the Word, Absolutely. Romans 12, 2. Right. And so if we, if we do that, there'll be an automatic process of changing our nature and our character. You know, let me read a, a scripture for you here. Uh, it's out of Proverbs eleven three, 3. And it says, The integrity of the upright will guide them. But the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Wow. <laughs> and so having good character also means having integrity. It means being being the same all the time as integrity, tried, proven, trustworthy. Sure. And so that will, will lead us and guide us because we're matching ourselves up with the nature and the character of Christ. Right. And then so we're talking about then conduct. So conduct, that's, and you you already mentioned that, but why don't you just give us a little more insight on that? Yeah, so I think of conduct as moral conduct is that there's a big difference on uh, it. Let me rewind, rewind. Moral conduct is more on how you're acting. And there's a difference of knowing what is right to do and then also doing the right thing. Oh, good. So Very good. let me Very give good. you an example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as I mentioned to you all before that I came from the financial industry, and I'm going to give you a little tip here. So here's an example, is that let's say you have a joint account with someone, mm -hmm. okay? You both have a right to have access to that money, right? which means either one of you at either time can go in, take all that money, leave the other person dry, and flee the country. <laughs> that is something that you have the right to do as that joint owner, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's the right thing to do. Very good. And I'm not giving anybody ideas, so, you know. <laughs> we're telling you what not to do. We're telling you not to do. But really, that's what the moral conduct is, is that our actions have to represent what we're actually, what our character is and where we're putting our standards. Right. Very that's good. That's what people see. Very and good. if they don't see that, that's where, you know, using banking terms, we become counterfeit. Very good. Very good. And I, I, I think that the most important thing that we can remember uh, uh, with our conduct is to really, uh, with with all effort that we have, to do things the way Jesus would do them. So Absolutely. that we, we won't be uh, tagged as a hypocrite. 
Mm -hmm. a, a pretender. That's all a hypocrite is, is an actor, a pretender, a false face. And how many times we've, we've heard those terms thrown around and yet we don't really think about what that really is. So if we're, if we're talking to someone and we say, uh, well, this is what I will do. And we see in the word that that's what Jesus asked us to do. And yet we don't follow through with that. Sure. Then we're becoming unfaithful Absolutely. and we are a pretender and a counterfeiter. So yeah, <laughs> be the real deal. Will will be the real deal. You know, let me give you another scripture with that. First uh, Corinthians uh, six twelve says that all things are lawful for me, uh, but all not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of anyone or anything. And and so what it, what it's saying here is that just because I can doesn't mean I should. Mm -hmm. And so we have to learn how to say no to ourselves. And you know, I, I, I know that there's such a hunger for power sometimes. Right. So we'll manipulate, we'll, we'll um, do things that are not integral just to get into a power place or to set ourselves above maybe in a job or, or we'll undercut other people so sure. that we can step on them to go forward. Uh, but that kind of conduct... Uh, is not at all what Jesus would do. When, when, when we uh, follow him and we do what he asks us to do, uh, you know, the word says that, that when our ways please the Lord, that he'll make even our enemies to be at peace with us. So he'll he'll promote us at the right season when Absolutely. we do the things his way. Awesome. So let, let's talk a, a little bit about culture then. Ooh, Ooh culture. a good one. Hmm, culture. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, and and. I, I've been around for a lot of decades, <laughs> seven plus, but <laughs> but I, in my lifetime, I've never seen anything like our culture is right now. You mean mayhem? Uh, yeah. Yeah, mayhem. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. And so uh, what, what, what could you give us as a little bit of an insight with our moral compass and culture? Well... I want to talk a little bit about how the culture really affects me and, and my personal experience. So I love culture. I love music culture. I love fashion culture. I love reading about culture. I love traveling. It's so important to, to learn about culture. However, there's a point where you have to decide mm -hmm. if culture is really what defines you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to speak from more of ethnic culture perspective is I grew up in a Hispanic home and we celebrate our Mexican Americanism as first generations mm -hmm. and so it is very apparent in everything that we do the, the food that we eat mm -hmm. sometimes even how we dress sometimes how we talk okay now when when I was younger is when my parents even though they knew of God and they knew of Jesus but there's a difference of knowing and then being transformed good, they had a good. transformation with mm -hmm. Christ and life from then on shifted as, mm -hmm. And I noticed this as a child, like, oh, okay, certain things are just different. And it's because our moral compass or our value was no longer just to our ethnicity, which we love and we mm -hmm. celebrate, mm -hmm. but Jesus was now the dominant factor here. So good. His word was the dominant factor. So good. And we still celebrated, we still did certain things, but some things I would see my mom, she would start to question things or my dad would say, why is it that we do what we do? Very good. And it would prompt for a lot of healthy dialogue, um, even to even explain to children as well, to myself, and say, yeah, why is it that we do that? Is that what Jesus would do in that situation? Very good. Very good. So instead of our ethnic culture, we have to take on the kingdom culture. Absolutely. And let the kingdom then dictate. Uh, in my household, I was raised by my grandmother, and uh, she was British, she was mm -hmm. Scottish, and so... Uh, you know, things are just normal when you're around culture and that you just pick it up and think that's the way things should be. Uh, and I don't know if you're aware of it, but the Brits have a tremendous amount of superstition. Oh. Tremendous. And so um, I, I would just pick up superstition at the drop of a hat and then I would add that into okay. who I was because of that. Sure. And so... Uh, uh, my grandmother had uh, some godly principles, but she was not born again. So mm. she would never have the transformation. Right. She would There's try to do things right, 
but but unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of, of God, kingdom of heaven. And so that you're going to find in John 3, 3. And so if we can't see the kingdom, how can we emulate the kingdom? And then we don't have the power to, to transform to the kingdom because we have to have the work from the inside out out right. if we're doing work from the outside then then we just become religious and that's more of the concept that I was raised under and so uh, when when I uh, received the Lord and I started finding that that the word said these things are not appropriate within the kingdom culture and I had to really make a choice yeah to lay them aside. So much verbiage, so many sayings, you almost have to stop and say, why do I say that? Right. What is that that I'm speaking over? What is it that I'm even declaring out into the atmosphere? Exactly, Just really prophesying it into yeah, existence. Maybe it was from an innocent perspective at first, but when you stop and realize the authority that you have in your words, it, oh, it changes everything. It's so true, so true. Uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to abbreviate a little story uh, about culture and, and sometimes why we do the things we do. Uh, there was a young man and he got married and uh, the first thing his wife did because she loved her husband so much was she baked him a, a ham for dinner because that oh, was her best nice. meal. So she put it in front of him and, and again, I'm going to abbreviate the story. It's a lot funnier if I do it with all the <laughs> details in it. But she cooked him a ham and it had some scoring and glazed and that sort of thing in it. And because he was a good husband, he looked at her and he said, this is the best ham I've ever eaten in my life. And so she said, thank you. And so the day was made. And so then they went over to the mother-in-law's house and uh, she wanted to serve her best meal. So she brought out the ham again. And it, it was the same as the one that the wife had made. And it was scored mm. and glazed and, and it looked just like it. And both of them had cut the ends off of the ham. And so he, he looked at mom and he said, you know, this is one of the best hams I've ever eaten. Is it because you cut the ends off of it and you scored it and glazed it? And she said, no, I've just always done it that way. So they go over to grandma's and grandma pulls out the ham. Oh man, famous there it ham. Is, the famous ham. That was a, a culture of hams. A dictation <laughs> of, of hams, good hams. And so she brought it out and the ends were cut off of it and it was scored and glazed. And so he goes, grandma, this is such a fabulous ham. Is it because you glazed it and you scored it and you cut the ends off of it? And she looked at him and she said, well, no, silly. My baking dish is just too small. Right. Okay. So the moral of the story is this. There was really no right or reason. <laughs> Sometimes we're doing things and we don't know why we're doing them. And maybe you're losing the best part of the ham. Right. Everybody likes the end piece, right? Nice and crispy. And so so why don't we just look at why we're doing something and go back to the word and say, is there a basis for this? Absolutely. So, okay. So watch your ham. Yes. Who's hungry for ham? <laughs> Oh, I'm hungry. Okay. Uh, and then, then another one of our C's is courage. You know, moral, uh, moral compass and moral code actually brings you courage because right. you can stand in strength knowing that God's backing you up. Yeah. So tell, tell us a little bit about courage. I think this mm. is the hottest topic is courage, having moral courage, because Moral courage is the courage to take action for a moral reason despite the type of consequence Good. you mm -hmm. might mm -hmm. receive. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, I think the easiest way to make sure that you always have moral courage is to know your standards Good. before you even get Good. into that situation Good. where they're tested. Good. And the Bible, the word is filled with um, examples and, and situations where men and women had to display their moral courage. I mean, Daniel prayed when it was illegal, even though he knew it meant being thrown into a lion's den. Even Jesus continued to teach the gospel, even right. though his life was at stake. Now, I think for some of us, we're a little over dramatic. Our life is not really at <laughs> stake, even though we might say it is. Um, but it doesn't mean we don't have opportunities to display moral courage. Sometimes it's just even in a social media post, how you're going to say something good. in a good. response good. to a friend who called you crying and they want sympathy about something. And you're thinking, I can't give that to you because 
that is not going to help you in the situation and it goes against my standard and value. Good. And you've said this before that when people talk to you and they say, can I get your thoughts on something? You say, do you really want to know? And that gives you that permission to say, okay, you've asked me, so I'm going to share the biblical truth and biblical perspective. Right. right. And so when you think about that moral courage is think about what do you do in those so situations and, good. and backing down is never really the answer. Very good. Um, screaming in their face is probably also not the answer either. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> and if we, and if they turned into the tuned into the previous program, we we talked about how to to respond with people courageously, brave, um, but graciously, right, and respectful. Speaking the truth and love. speaking that truth in love. Absolutely. And not wavering from what is the absolute truth. Absolutely. That is so good. You know, what a, one of my things that I'm constantly uh, decreeing over myself and over those that I'm in relationship with uh, is that, that we would have a spine of steel, that we wouldn't bend, bow, or compromise yeah. to any humanistic idealism or anything that comes to try and push us away from uh, what the what the kingdom culture dictates within the word. And so I say that to you right now. Yes. I say you will not bend, you will not bow, or you yes. will not compromise, but you will have a spine of steel and able to stand in the midst of opposition without trying to push your own way, but allowing God to make the way for Amen. you. That's okay. good. That's good. Okay. All right. I agree. Okay. And so the, the last one that I brought up was core values. Now, we, we talked a little bit last program about core values, but why, why don't you share with us from your perspective a little bit? When I think about core values, I think about if that common saying you may have heard, which is, because if you don't stand for something, you're just going to fall, fall for, for anything. anything. That yes, sounds good. Absolutely. Sign me up. That sounds good. Sign me up. Okay. Now, in, in Romans, um, the Bible says in chapter 2, verse 15, they demonstrate that God's law is written in their hearts for their own conscience mm, and thoughts either accuse them or tell them that they are doing right. So we see here in Romans that God has placed a sense of moral character and law in all of our conscience. Right. So it's not something that we have to um, think really hard about. It's naturally mm -hmm. part of our moral being. And this type of hard wiring is for us to do what we believe is right and restrains us from doing wrong. And so if, when you have a good biblical conscience, mm -hmm. that good. becomes a powerful ally in living life. Awesome. That's so true. And really, and until Jesus comes, we're going to be battling this day in and day out. That's true. Um, there's always going to be us speaking, those speaking biblical truths and then those combating it. It's really ultimately that person's decision. What side are you going to be on? That's true. And to maintain God's standards, sometimes you have to be that one voice. That's true. Be that person who stands up and says, whoa, 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 pump the brakes. Like, turn <laughs> down the music, slow down with the confetti guns. We need to stop and think about what we're doing right good. now. That's it so looks good. like all prime and pretty and fun, but really, what truth is here? Very good. Very good. And you know, sometimes because... Uh, we, we can tend to compromise our core values rather than standing steadfast in them so that we can stand on the truth that we know to be valuable. Uh, you know, like you said, you may be the one person, but when you think about it, uh, look at a lighthouse. Mm -hmm. A lighthouse is only one in the midst of a vast sea. And it, it's standing there to protect us others from running ashore and becoming yeah. shipwrecked right and so if we look at ourselves at time uh we may not even be able to say much but we can stand like a like a, a beacon like a light in a dark place right. and we can stand our ground and we we have to sometimes exercise our no muscle just because it's the right thing to do and you know a lot of people don't like to be turned down or told know that you won't participate with something but you don't have to do it in a critical manner yeah. you can just say no thank you for for me and this this is for me is that because i don't drink before i got saved i was an alcoholic i, I have not had a drink since the day i got saved so it's it's been 45 years 
Uh, I did go to a wedding once and ate some rum cake, but that doesn't count. Yeah, but we anyway. didn't know. There was no disclaimer on the print. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, if people are, are always, you know, you go to a reception or something, you know, and, and we're not just always around our own Christian friends. And so I get offered drinks, you know, different things like that. And I just say, well, thank you very much, but no, thank you. I, I don't have to explain myself sure. away or anything. And so I think sometimes people have such a hard time standing on their values because they don't want to either offend others yeah. or they want to look like they're blending in. Sure. Listen, you're born a copy. Uh, not a copy. You're born an original. There you right. go. Don't die a copy. Right. So stand your ground. If it's not right for you, just say it's not right for me. That's okay, isn't it? It's okay. Yes, it is. And so with these things, I, I had written down a, a, uh, a question here for you. So how is the culture of today opposing godly morals and what can we do to change the direction? Really, I, I believe it's just, it's taking in, in everything that we've shared about today and in the previous program and implementing it on a daily basis. There it's you go. redefending, uh, excuse me, redefining what your compass is. Right. Because some of us think we have a compass, but we don't really know where it stems from. It just, it's not one of those like crystal ball compasses that has a different answer every right. single time. So it's going back, redefining your compass mm -hmm. and and see where is this really pointing and who's controlling this compass good am i just kind of like going like this and Where's just trying wind? to figure out yeah. <laughs> i guess i'll go this way right it's learning to to build your life decision making on the foundation of the word good um obedience and action it's understanding your good. character good uh, all the conduct and culture and core values and i most importantly it's allowing god to change you good it's allowing god to to allow you to be that follower of Christ and that when he gives you a new heart and he gives you a new spirit it ultimately then results in in new thinking good that's so good ray thank you so much it's also being uh as open to the holy spirit yes. so that when you're going the wrong direction let him say hey you're off track come yes back. Come, come back on come, come on back, back on course on. okay good well you know we're out of time ray so i just want to say thank you again thank for you. being here i appreciate you so much thank and you. please uh come back again look back at some of the other broadcasts that we've had in the past and i want to say to you that i speak to you to be filled with the love of God and to be led by the word of God and to be held in the strength and the power of his grace over your life. So come back and join us again. And again, thank you to Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network for being faithful to the mission that God has given to them. And we appreciate them and we appreciate you. God bless you. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.